This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed on how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. Do you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account? Yeah. <laughs> And you have no idea where it's going. Well, I know. It's all those subscriptions. So I used Rocket Money to help me find out what subscriptions I'm actually spending money on. It was eye-opening, and I had to cancel the ones I didn't want anymore, which was loads of them. Stop wasting times with things you don't use. Cancel unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash IDKAT. That's rocketmoney.com slash IDKAT, I-D-K-A-T, rocketmoney.com. Dot com slash IDKAT, I-D-K-A-T. No matter how you're approaching 2024, electric e-bikes can help you go the distance. From commutes to adventures, riders of all abilities can explore the new year with electric e-bikes. Explore 2024 with electric e-bikes, the most accessible and adventurous e-bikes ever. Visit electricebikes.com. That's L E C T R I C E B I K E S dot com to learn more and make sure you mention the I Don't Know podcast with me, Jim Jeffries. Send you, uh, they want you, there'll be a, a <laughs> checkout survey. Get involved with that. That's electric, L E C T R I C E B I K E S dot com. Anal sex, vaginal sex, which one is better to make children with? <laughs> you might find out, and I don't know about that, with Tim Jeffries. Yeah, it was, it was weird because, you know, we're in a new studio, mm. and so we're working out the kinks and stuff, but you could barely hear the music, so it just sounded like you were saying those words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I timed it well, though. Yeah. Uh, I think you're good. I like the fact that I said which one is better to make yeah. sex uh, to have children with, implying that one of them, they, they both work. Right, but one's better. Which one does the better job? Do we ever answer the questions you bring up in the intro? Well, Sometimes I don't think we've ever done them. any of them. Part of the joke is that you should already know. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Although, I guess when you're like, what came first, roof, walls, floor? Yeah. I don't know. Floor. Floor probably. You probably oh, don't maybe just... roof. You have a roof over a dirt floor. But I guess, do you create a floor, or does the floor already exist, and uh, you're actually creating the roof? You don't invent then, the floor. And then is the canopy of the forest the roof that's already there in a cave? Nature's roof. The cave's got the wall and the floor as one thing. Mm, that's why cavemen pick them first. Yeah, I think so. Less work. Mm. What do you reckon the oldest living caveman ever was? Like, how old do you reckon that caveman would have lived to? Twenty-eight. Ah, oh, older than that. 14. No, older than that. <laughs> it wasn't old. How old do you think? They always had beards. Um, yeah. I don't know. Cool. They didn't have the... the, the uh... We're coming to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see us, we're coming to Australia. Jack's going to be there. We, we may even record a live podcast in Australia. We're trying to set that up. At the Comics Lounge in Melbourne, we're looking at recording a live podcast. We don't have the date yet, but it would be somewhere near the end of April for that live podcast. I assume, another live podcast I assume promote, the topic will be boomerangs yeah <laughs> um, I am doing my own shows on the 24th and 26th of April at the Factory Theater in Sydney there's links to that on my website at foreshaw.net or you can go to Factory Theater in Sydney and buy the tickets 24th and 26th of April Woo. and then I will also be at the Comics Lounge I think it's the 2nd 3rd and 4th of May so it'll be right after our podcast that the links aren't up for that yet but I'll put that up and um and we have a live podcast here as well in LA on March 5th. That's coming up. Flappers. Um, at Flappers. That's in two weeks from today. At Flappers, you can. Mm. Uh, I'll post some stuff on the Instagram March at ID Cat Podcast. Be with you. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we'll post some links to that, but you can go to the Flappers uh, Comedy Club website and buy tickets on that. It's Tuesday, March 5th at 8 p.m. Uh, the last one was really fun. We had a really fun time. So. It was Titanic, but this one is going to be a much sadder topic. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know what it is. I don't know. But it can't why be, sadder? It can't be more fun than the Titanic. <laughs> Titanic was the most fun. That was a fun Titanic one. Titanic was really good. It was good. It was really good. So March 5th, buy tickets for that, and then uh, buy tickets for my Australia shows and the podcast, and then- And I'll be in Australia, but I don't want you to know why. Woohoo! It'll be revealed at some point. You're not yeah. allowed to reveal yet? I'm not allowed to reveal. It's so stupid. 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm you got a show here. You can I've got a tour coming up in Australia, but not in April, but I'm doing something else in Australia in April. March 8th and 9th, you'll be at the Mirage in Las Vegas. Yeah, baby. March 16th, uh, Grand Ronde, Oregon at the Spirit Mountain Casino. Yeah, Didn't sounds that, like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> March 26th at Des Moines, uh, Iowa. March 22nd, Des Moines, Iowa for the Bats. March 23rd uh, in Kansas City at the Midland Theater. And you'll be in South Africa April 12th and 13th. Spokane, Denver. The LA shows have officially so been rescheduled to December fourteenth. December fourteenth in LA. Sorry, there was a there was a conflict there. Um, and in between all these shows, I'll be selling my body on the streets of LA. Cool. <laughs> um, and go to ID Cat Podcast on Instagram. And by, by the way, we're gonna have some new merch. <gasps> Ooh, I'm wearing it right now. No. That's not it. Um, <laughs> but we're getting a cut, little bit of redesign. It's this uh, T-shirt. Mm, it's going to be a black T-shirt probably. One day we'll show them off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I would say in the next couple weeks here, we'll have merch. We'll have a link for it. We're going to have T-shirts and hats right now. No mugs. All right. Mugs are tough. Yes. Tough to do stuff with. I don't know. I think that's it. You want to say anything else, Jim? I was acting like I was frozen to see if people were upset with uh, Well... <laughs> Join the conversation. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Um, yeah, uh, come and see me. I'll be telling jokes. All right. JimJeffries.com. Go there. JimJeffries.com. Forshaw.net. What, do you want to pro anything, Jack? Uh, go to my website, jackhackett.com. What's Busy. going on there? Doohickeys are going cool off. Doohickeys. Jack's going to be in Australia. I'm going to be in Australia. He's going to be in Australia. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> right. Jack. Jack's the worst at promoting of all of us. <laughs> hey, hey, girls, if you want a nice American boy and you're in Melbourne in April. Clean dick. I've got a guy for you. Clean dick. I got I'm a guy available. There. Wait, are you clean dick 69 or 96? I'm clean dick uh, 99. 99. <laughs> because I'm in line and I'm talking to the girl yeah, in front of me and she right. turn around. She's turned away. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I still have that pillow on my bed. Dick 99. <laughs> He's respectful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very respectful. I won't even make you turn around to have a conversation. <laughs> so, uh, you, you going on this ride as well? <laughs> oh, she's got headphones in. Okay. <laughs> All right. You still have a jersey? Don't you have a jersey? Yeah, I have a Tottenham Hotspurs jersey. It's a Clean Dick 99 <laughs> on it. <laughs> wear that. Uh, podcast. We'll, we'll, get you, we'll get you a rugby league jersey when we're in Australia. Oh, you, we, we could go to... Oh, it, it's April. Anzac Day. Yeah, we could go to the AFL while we're down there yeah, one day. Yeah, yeah. That might be a fun thing to do. Is that the Bears? No, it's the Australian rules football. It's it. But uh, Anzac Australian Day would be the league. day, right? It's uh, it will, Anzac Day will be there because no no one will be working. I, I, my show, I specifically, I know I'm not doing a show on Anzac Day, so no one's working. You can't. Yeah, work. You're yeah, not allowed yeah. to work. On What's Anzac, Anzac day? day again? Anzac Anzac Day is our Memorial Day where mm. we believe in the troops. I was just talking about that, like like so they, they just had the Golden Bachelor. Right, mm. where they had all like the seventy to eighty year olds dating each other, yeah. and and they're bringing them back for the regular bachelor now. They're bringing back these brassy old women that's like, "Hey, you girls, I'll tell you how we used to do it back in our day," <laughs> right? And uh, and it's like it's all going to be it's all fun and good having these fun sort of golden girls type of ladies on screen yeah. until we start having the in memoriam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there'll be episodes. Ah, uh, we lost Cyril. <laughs> this week right because because okay so anzac day they always march the so it'll be particularly for me personally this anzac day will be a big one you know what i mean and yep. um uh the soldiers march and when i was a kid when i was little i remember that they'd, they'd you know you'd go through you'd see vietnam you'd see korea then you'd see the second world war and then they'd bring out the first world war blokes right and there'd always be there's about 40 of them when i was a little kid and then the next year there was like they drop quickly. The next year there'd be thirty five, and then you went straight down to twenty five, and then there was this one bloke who was like hundred and ten. Like, <laughs> he, he's marching down the street, everyone's tearing up, and he's like, "I, I was just in catering." Um, but uh, <laughs> but they, you, you guys definitely celebrate the 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 your veterans and the active members way more than this well, country does. No, okay, so I'll say I would say I'll say this about America, and this will be a controversial opinion that I I, I believe in. So you do what you want with this opinion. Mm -hmm. But when my nephew died, uh, I saw Australia come together in a very beautiful way. I saw soldiers and and students who just in cadets and stuff lining the streets, hundreds of them saluting uh, the coffin as it went by. Uh, it was on the news every minute of the day. 
um, and uh, people were coming up to me in the street to to give their respects. And this this Anzac Day, those four men who were the last four men to die in service for a very long time, they will be heavily remembered on Anzac Day coming up. Yeah. Now, in Australia, when Anzac Day happens, young people will go along to see dawn services to hear the last post and watch the sun come up and remember the fallen soldiers right back to the war in Gallipoli and all that type of stuff. And the whole country stops. We all gamble. It was also fun. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. We all we all play two up. You can gamble in the streets, a toss of a coin. And it was a game it. that was played in the trenches of World War One. Yeah. And so now it's basically flipping a coin and guessing two out of three heads or tails. And every bar that we went, we we watched the parade. When I was there, one year with you, mm. watched the parade. We watched Max march in the parade, actually, and mm. watched. And then we went to um to a place, and there was two guys dressed up like the crocodile hunter, yeah, yeah. <laughs> flipping <laughs> coins. And everybody's gambling. It's like eleven thirty in the morning. You eat like a sausage sandwich, right? Yeah, it's sausage. Sprig sandwich. of rosemary on your thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People uh, are just gambling. They call it a sausage sizzle. It's just a bit of white bread wrapped yeah. around a sausage, yeah. right? And so everyone's gambling and stuff, but it, it's a it's a real day of remembrance that yeah. people take very seriously. And you have Memorial Day over yeah. here, but it's not quite the same gravitas as Anzac Day in Australia and New Zealand. But Americans will do the whole: you're at the baseball, or the basketball, and stand up, and you know they stand up. Or if yeah. you're on a plane, or we got a we got a serviceman on the plane, and we give you a, and I support the troops and respect the troops. Of course, I do. Anyone who puts their body on the line for my freedom, of course, I respect them. Um, but you know, when my nephew died, two weeks later, in the same war games in Australia, a helicopter crashed, and I believe six Americans died, and it fucking hardly made the news. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And and I see a lot of war veterans in this country who are homeless, who aren't getting the, the medical need, both mentally and physically, they need it after returning from war. It, it, America, I believe it's, it's uh, one thing to say to, I support our troops, and it's another thing to actually support your troops. Uh, there's, a lot yeah. of lip, there's a lot of lip service that goes on, Tons. and there should be more action. It looks like and you're going to be landing on Anzac That's day. my two cents for the day. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, clean deck 99. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get some people who are angry with me saying that, but I, I, I believe that's a positive statement, not a negative. And now let's meet our guest, Dr. Brian Hefflinger. G'day, Dr. Brian Hefflinger. Uh, now it's time to play... Yes, no. Yes, no. Why yes, not? No. Let's do yes, it. No. Here we go. Judging a book by its cover. All right. Uh, was that a different version of that? It seemed like it had a bit more... I don't know. There, it sounded a little different, but it's something to I'll do with it. I'll fix it in post. The new uh, studio. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. The, the, the mix was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, okay. I've got to be able to see the doctor to be able to know. Okay. Uh, so he's in a blurry background. Yep. Uh, top, so, top secret. Yeah. Top secret background. Uh, are you a doctor of medicine, okay. sir? I am a doctor of medicine. Doctor of medicine. Yes. Uh, do you have patients? I do have patience. Okay. Well, sometimes you're a doctor of medicine might work at a university or something like that. So um, do you deal with the brain? I do deal with the brain. How are you guessing all this? Well, it's either body yeah. or brain. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <but laughs> uh, only two parts of being wait, a doctor. He's guessing, wait, you're guessing, I'm guessing. He doesn't. He doesn't know what we're talking about at yeah. all, ever. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you a psychiatrist? Wow, that's pretty good. So, but, are you a psychiatrist? I am not. Well, you're not. Okay, but you deal with the brain. You a brain surgeon? I am. Good job. All right. Yeah, that was are easy we, for you. Usually, he doesn't guess wow. things. Doctor, are, 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 are we talking about brain wow, surgery? How did he do that? How did he do that? I'm a marine biologist. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not brain surgery, mate. Um, <laughs> um, yes, the Dr. Brian Hefflinger, MD, graduated from medical school in 1992, then went on to study at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute Research Fellowship. His neurosurgery residency was in Rochester, New York, from 1993 to 99. And now Dr. Hefflinger has been a full-time practicing neurosurgeon in Toledo, Ohio for the past 25 years. Um, you That's can find the home of Klinger from MASH. Toledo is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, good job. Yeah, Pacos, Tony Pacos. <laughs> uh, on social media, Dr. Hefflinger has been able to introduce people to the world of neurosurgery as well as bring positive change to the world by highlighting topics important to him and his family. In just over 18 months, he has accumulated over 1.3 million followers and over 100 million views on social platforms. Wow. You can find him. Damn. How do you do that? You do the TikToks? Well, he, where he's going? We'll find out. TikTok, you got I, the dance? Instagram, and YouTube. It's all at doctor. Spell the word out. D-O-C-T-O. I'm trying to promote him, it's 
Screw on. the brain stuff. TikTok. We need social media tips. <laughs> yeah. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, at Dr. Hefflinger. That's D-O-C-T-O-R. Spell it out. And then Hefflinger is H-O-E-F-L-I-N-G-E-R. And also, uh, he has just started a podcast called The Hefflinger Podcast, which you can find on all platforms. Um, Dr. Hefflinger, tell us a little bit more about your story and how... I know Jim's curious how you blew up on social media and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So when we first got on social media, what we did is um, I do patient videos for my patients. So if you come in to have surgery with me, most people don't remember much of what I said or what I reviewed. So I have patient videos that explain the surgery to them. So when they go home, they can watch it online. Their family can meet me. They can learn about what we talked about in the office. And so the patients like that so much that my son said, why don't you try doing a TikTok on neurosurgery and see if people would be interested. Um, and so that's where it all started. And then from there, you know, my son died in a car accident. Um, oh, sorry to hear that. Thir- uh, 11 years ago when he was 18, he, he was a drunk driver. And thank God he only killed himself. But, um, you know, I just couldn't let my son die and just let it go without doing something. So we got big into social media 10 years ago and, you know, we just wanted to try to educate kids about drinking and, and drinking and driving. And um, we were featured on the Katie Kirk show at that point. And we've, we've talked to hundreds of high school classes across the country. And I'm still a full time neurosurgeon, but, you know, just that's kind of lingered. And then just recently when I got on TikTok and I started getting big and people started following me and I put out some personal stories, um, Box Media and TikTok contacted me. And they wanted to do a documentary on us and they came to our house and spent like 13 hours that day and um they they took a lot of footage and then you know over the past six to eight weeks they've had this commercial that talks about my son brian and underage drinking and drunk driving and and just it's a you know public safety announcement kind of commercial but it's it's been out there on national television for six to eight weeks now and and things have just kind of it's just like me being on your podcast you know it just things happen you know things get put in front of you and i promised myself i'd never say no when i get a chance to do something positive so that's kind of where we've where we've come from and and where we're going and i don't know why people follow me so so much on social media i mean i i think the first two or three weeks we're on we had a hundred thousand followers and we're growing on all platforms and then we thought we'd start a podcast we got about 20 episodes into our podcast and um, I'm just looking forward to the future in social media, actually. Oh, it's, 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 great. it's, it's good that you're doing positive things and this podcast. So, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Some things are just for fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some things you should say no to, Dr. Hafflinger. No, that, no I'm kidding. <laughs> Thanks for being on our podcast. Um, all right. Well, well, I know it's been a long time, sir, but I'm, I'm sorry about your son. That's, that's, that's terrible. You have to go. I, I, I lost a nephew recently, and I like my best friend died in a car accident when I was 16. It, it, never, it never leaves you. Bloody yeah. tough it is. All right. It well, doesn't, but you can definitely move on and, and you know change things for the better. So that's yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, so I'm going to ask Jim a, a series of questions about neurosurgery or, you know, brain surgery, neurosurgery. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's going to answer them. At the end of him answering these, Dr. Hefflinger, uh, you're going to grade him on his accuracy, 0 through 10. 10 the most accurate. Uh, Jack here is going to grade him on his confidence. I'm going to grade him on how hungry I am. Uh mm-hmm. At and least there's a sandwich for you over there. There's when sandwiches right today. there. Yeah. Jackpot sandwiches today. Uh, at the end of that, we'll put those all together. 21 through 30, you're a genius, Jim. Brain gen- 11 through 20, Abby normal. Jack did these. Zero through Young 10, Frank smooth brain. <laughs> oh, it's from Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein oh, reference, yeah. Uh, what is neurosurgery? It's uh, the surgery of the brain. Uh, neurons are the things that transmit the information to mm-hmm. make your body move or make decisions and stuff like that. Um, and so it's uh, it's the neurological uh, surgery mm-hmm. of the brain slash mind. Yeah. Okay. What parts of the body make up the nervous system? Um, your your whole ectoskeleton has uh, a neuro. <laughs> what was that word? Ectoskeleton. Okay. <laughs> what are we bugs? Uh, your, your entire body has has uh, nerve systems. Through, what through it, parts through of the body make up the nervous system? Oh, we'll go the brain then. Mm-hmm. Anything else? And fingertips. Fingertips, okay. In the U.S., <laughs> how much education tr- or slash training does it take to be able to be 
uh, legally practicing neurosurgery. You do your four, first four initial years, and then you would have to specialize and do another three years. I'm going to say it's a seven-year degree. Okay. What is the earliest known record of brain surgery? Uh, Mary Schelling's Frankenstein. Uh, I, I would say the earliest... It would have been... There would be a lobotomy or something, if that counts as a as a brain surgery, or I guess it would be a brain surgery. They, they were lobotomizing people long time ago. I, I'm going to say 2000 BC. 2000 BC. Mm, yeah, lobotomizing people. Man. What is yeah. trephination? Uh, it's when you when you get to an edge and you go, oh, I shouldn't walk much further. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, when was the first successful brain tumor removed? Um... 1976. Any other information about it? Uh, it was a summer's day. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what, are, what are some types of surgery a neurosurgeon would perform? Uh, removal of brain tumors, um, uh, lobotomies, mm -hmm. uh, that one where you put the shock therapy. That mm -hmm. wouldn't be, no, that's not brain surgery, is it? Um, there'd be something else to do with. We haven't done how far. I wonder how far we are from a brain transplant. And if you get the brain out. transplant, do you become like the other person? Yeah, because it's an organ like anything else, right? <clears throat> we got heart transplants and other ones, the kidney, so the brain. I think we're a ways off on that one. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking of a movie <laughs> where, where I, I, I'm a hot chick. <laughs> no, I'm going to get Rob Schneider to play me. Okay. Uh, what is an aneurysm? Uh, an aneurysm is like a brain hemorrhage. Uh, it's um, it's like a bleeding of the brain. What is craniotomy? Uh, your cranium is your head. Uh -huh. Tonomy is your top of your head. Craniotomy, top of your head. So it's cra cr crani it's craniotomy. Craniotomy. I'm ah, sorry. That's different. That's the yeah, that's the that, that is different. That's craniotomy. Way different. Sorry. That's the removal of the brain. <laughs> Craniotomy is removal wow. of the brain. Okay. What about a I'm limb? I'm not a doctor. What about a I limb? Went, I went to two years of musical theater <laughs> university, right? And I reckon there's seven to eight years of this, so I'm going to be pretty far off on these, I reckon. What about a laminectomy? <laughs> what? Laminectomy. <laughs> Lemon? Laminectomy. L -A -M. Oh, it's where, you, it's where you laminate a brain. Okay. There so you go. that it doesn't uh, hematobin. What about a disectomy? <laughs> Dissectomy is when you dissect a brain, you, you, cut a little, you cut a little bit out. Sure, okay. Why would a patient be awake during a specific brain surgery? So they can tell him what to do. So they go like this, does that bit hurt? Yeah, it's that bit. What about this bit? Nah, not that bit. <laughs> That's okay. No, I think they probably need the brain to actually be firing and, and mm. little pew, 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 things going on so they can see the brain working. And if you're under anesthesia, maybe they can't see it working. Okay. What is a lobotomy, as you've mentioned, and how, how is it performed? Lobotomy is taking a small portion of your brain out of, I believe, this bit here. If, if the Planet of the Apes taught me anything, <coughs> yeah. it's a scar and a little, you like a horseshoe scar here. Yeah. Right? And they take a bit of your brain so you like this. How do they do it? <laughs> With a scalpel, dude. Okay. <laughs> what is a cyber knife? Ah, <laughs> that's, how they, that's how they do lobotomies. <laughs> okay, is that where you're going with? Yeah, yeah. It, that is a good guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, I, I, I will tell you these. I didn't put these next to each other for It's any things reason. that you buy on Black Monday, <laughs> Black Friday, whatever it is. <laughs> oh. Cyber Monday? Cyber Monday. <laughs> cyber Monday. <laughs> I don't, do, I, I don't need the specials. I, I'll do well. Okay. What is a shunt? <laughs> um, uh, uh, a shunt uh, is a female cunt. <laughs> no. <laughs> is that your final answer? Oh, no, oh, 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 it's it's when you tell a cunt to be quiet. What's the rating the of this show? Uh, this is uh, this is an oh, R. No, no, no. It's, Double it's, R. It's, <laughs> all ages. <laughs> we don't discriminate. <laughs> what? What Little are, cunts, old cunts, all of them. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right. What are craniopagus twins? Is that right? Craniopagus, doctor? Yeah. Craniopagus twins are um, uh, more commonly known mm -hmm. as Siamese twins. Mm -hmm. It's when their cranium, they're joined at the cranium. And they're very hard to, to separate once they're joined, the, the, the twins, like they're very hard to separate. 
Yeah, that's very hard. Yeah, they're they, hard. Ben, I imagine. Car- ben Carson's was one of the doctors that did it, I believe. He was one of the experts yeah. in it. Oh, yeah? Mm. All right, Pete. Uh, what, did, what did Jose Delgado do? Uh, freed the Spanish. Okay. Uh, <laughs> doctor. <laughs> Just a fun fact. Doc- <laughs> Dr. Brian Haslinger. As well as what you have written down. <laughs> Dr. Brian Hefflinger, how did Jim do on his knowledge of neurosurgery? Zero through 10, 10's the best. All together? Yeah. Yeah. yeah whole, uh, uh, his accuracy. I mean, maybe eight, uh, three. Yeah, three. I got a point for Ben Carson's. Yeah. That's ben pretty Carson good. probably did get you. No, the last three points. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was impressed. The doctor was, uh, how do you do in confidence? I have to give him a six. He was doing well, but then he went, I'm not a doctor. I don't know these answers. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that nice didn't man. help. Great. I'm pretty hungry. The sandwich is right over there, but uh, good. I'll give you a 10. That's only 19. So you're Abby Normal from you know, hey. Um Going forward, uh, doctor. I never said I was good at brain surgery. I never said that was one of my skills. Yeah, I, I didn't think you were really on your resume. Yeah, no, no, Three no, is no. about is pretty good uh, from where I thought my, you'd be. My medical knowledge is about stops at band aids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think you're good at band aids. I call them sticky squares. <laughs> uh, doctor Hefflinger, what is neurosurgery? Jim said the surgery of the brain. I mean, he does this thing where he repeats, you know, neurons transmit. I, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did pretty good. I mean, so obviously neurosurgery is a surgical treatment of um, the brain, the spinal cord, the peripheral nerve. So it's more than just the brain, you know, neck surgery, back surgery, carpal tunnel surgery. You know, those are things that a neurosurgeon treats as well as brain problems. Mm-hmm. So he had, he had part of it, right? Yeah. And so the parts of the body that make up the nervous system is, uh, he said, ectoskeleton. The ectoskeleton. Yeah. ectoskeleton. The brain yeah, and the brain fingertips. And finger, so the Thing. fingers aren't part of it. Yeah. But um, it's the brain, Great the spinal disagree. cord, and the perf- and peripheral nerves. That's the nervous system. Oh, the spine and the brain. So I ran the peripheral nerves, nervous, yeah. And peripheral nerves, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I was doing this with my hands. That's, that's a, I don't fingers. know. <laughs> so all the fingers. You touch things. How? And, and like, you point at people like, you true. sure have a nerve. <laughs> what? You got a lot of nerve. You got a lot of nerve, yeah, okay. Um, the nerve, yeah. the peripheral I'm nervous system. finger that's got a lot of nerve. Is yeah. that, can you see that? <laughs> Like, can you see nerves? Like the ner- or like you can blood vessels? No, you can't. I mean, no, you can't see nerves. I mean, they're they're within the body. So, like the carpal tunnel nerve. You know, people have carpal tunnel syndrome when you you open up the space for that nerve. It it lies under the skin, maybe you know, a quarter of an inch. So. Oh, that, that's what I meant. When you cut open the skin, you can. So, see, what like, does a nerve look like? Yeah, you can see the nerves when you cut when you cut open. Like today, I did two surgeries, and so. In the lower back, so I can today? see the nerves when I get down to that part of the body. Sorry, are we stopping you from saving someone's life? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you are not. I'm not on call right now. We we, we made sure to work with the schedule for yeah. the surgery. So. Because I'm meant to be saving someone's life, and I showed up. <laughs> <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, around New Year's, we, we all make New Year's resolutions when we really should be focusing on things that we're already doing right. I'll tell you things I'm already doing right. Um... <laughs> Uh, I, I, I don't stay in bed as much as I used to. I used to wallow and think I, I make sure I get up and I do things and I have a structure to me life and a bit of order. I've kept on doing that all year and it's made a huge difference. Uh, around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves. Instead of just expanding on what we're doing right, maybe you finally organise one part of your space and you want to tackle another, yeah, the garage, and then you want to do the living room. Or it might be a space in your brain. Mm. Metaphors and similes and actual facts all apply here. Or maybe you're just taking your supplements every morning and you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. I have dealt with uh, depression throughout my life. I have used therapy and I can tell you this. When I'm in therapy, I'm not, I, know, I won't say substantially better. Sometimes I am substantially better. Sometimes I'm a little bit better. But I'll tell you this as a fact. When I'm in therapy, I am not going worse. Yep. I maintain and I build and I work upwards. Therapy isn't a magic pill where you're going to all of a sudden be cured. But 
it is a relief. And just talking to someone can change your whole point of view. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched up with a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate your progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. Hey. You got subscriptions. The only thing that you should never cancel your subscription for is the I don't know about that podcast because we don't charge you anything. You just subscribe and you listen. But every other subscription I have, I seem to have to pay for. And I've got ones for different streamers. I got ones for all these different streamers and I didn't have any of them bundled. I was losing a lot of money when they weren't bundled and I found that out through Rocket Money. Uh, okay, there were subscriptions that my wife had and I had as well and we were doubling up. Oh, we, we, I literally, after I got Rocket Money, and I'm, I'm no kidding, I reckon I'm saving 150 bucks a month on wasted shit that I was just <clears> paying for. <throat> Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and lowers your bills. Who doesn't want to lower their bills? I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it just with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund on the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate a lower bills for you for up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and it has helped save its members an average of $720 a year. I'm, I was way higher. I was way higher. But the average is 700 Who doesn't want $720 with over... $500 million uh, dollars in cancelled subscriptions. That was Most of that was just me. Uh, stop wasting money on things that you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash IDKAT, I-D-K-A-T. That's rocketmoney.com slash IDKAT, rocketmoney.com slash IDKAT, I-D-K-A-T. No matter how you're approaching 2024, electric e-bikes can help you go the distance. From commutes to adventures, riders of all abilities can explore the new year with electric e-bikes. Go to electricebikes.com and learn more about their wide selection of e-bikes that start at just $7.99 for the XB Lite. That's electric, L-E-C-T-R-I-C, and then e-bikes.com. Uh, they sent me a bike. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't buy one. I was a bit skeptical. Get the bike. It's brilliant. This thing is made. It's durable. It's stylish. You look cool. Uh, you can customize the features, the colors, the seat, the handlebars. It's all up to you. Uh, you can go cool places. I didn't know there was a bike track near me house. Right by the river. I've been trying to get my car onto it, but I couldn't until I got the <laughs> e-bike. <laughs> Anyone can ride, designed to be for better motor transport for all riders. Durable features and accessories for added safety, convenience, and control. Save on gas, save on parking, save on maintenance. Uh, have new conversations starter with your friends. And financing is as low as $49 per month. Add more physical activity to your everyday life, running errands, making your commute more enjoyable, or expand your weekend horizons. Up to 150 miles on one charge. That's electric's unbeatable long range options. Now, when you get a normal bike, right? These bikes work exactly the same. It's the same rules on the road. It's the same rules for you driving. You don't need to have any special safety regulations or road access or anything. And they're foldable and they're easy to store. But I should say, you got to check your local laws. Always check your local laws. That's got me in trouble before with different things that we're not going to talk about now. But when it comes to e-bikes, Check with your local authorities, see if you're allowed to use them. Uh, I use it just as a, a fun thing. I don't ride into work or anything, but Forrest has been using his to take his dog for a walk. He says, I strap my dog to my back and I get on the bike and I ride as far as I can. Me and Jack aren't sure if we believe him, but he says that's what he's up to. For the sake of the ad read, it's true. Well, he does say that. He does say that he's been strapping his dog to the, his back. While riding the bike. Yeah. Uh, I need video proof. Yeah. yeah we'll get it. Next ad read, we'll get video proof. Well, uh, yeah, next ad read, I'll be riding behind, holding a camera up, videotaping <laughs> Forrest on his e-bike with his dog strapped to his back. But this is a claim that he's made. 
Explore 2024 with electric e-bikes, the most accessible and adventurous e-bikes ever. Visit electricebikes.com to learn more. And be sure to mention that. I don't know about that podcast with Jim Jeffries. You've got to mention it. Mention it. When they'll give you a survey at the end. The, the checkout survey, just mention it. It'll be nice. That's electric, L-E-C-T-R-I-C, ebikes.com. Um, wait, so what do nerves look like? I never really, really thought about that. They're just... Um, God, they're like the, the, the nerves of the back, like the nerve I saw today was like, it's like a pearly white. They're round, they're round and they're like pearly white, I guess, like an off white color. Mm. Yeah. We had, we had a, oh. we had a grandfather who had like a Parkinson's type of thing. He was a step grandfather and he was always shaking like that. And his name was Rex and me and my brothers behind his back used to call him nervous Rex. Just thought I'd add that in. <laughs> okay. Well, if um, you hear this, Rex, we're sorry. He's now he's long dead. Nervous Rex. <laughs> Nervous Rex doesn't even know what podcasts are. <laughs> he he was dead before the internet. Nervous Rex. Yeah. Can you uh, see them with your naked eye? Do you need like a microscope to see him? Nerves. No, you can see them with your naked eye. I mean, wow. other, some nerves are really small and some are big. But so what, what do they look like? They like. Chewy. I use magnifying glasses at surgery to see them. Are they like? What color are they? So are they're they like pearly, pearly white. white. Pearly white, f- little like bold. a pearly white. Yeah, yeah like, I think ooh. it's not like I thought it was like tubes, like a sort of, but it's it's balls. Yeah, I don't know. Like when you like a it's, like I mean, a, it's small a little bit like that but, white um, chocolate Malteser. Would that be? I don't think he knows what a Malteser is. Or like with those mocap suits. <laughs> He's been to university, Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> He's, What's a Malteser? It's like a Whopper, it's but like, it's like a, in well, Australia well, they call them the malted Maltesers. milk ball. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they do it with white chocolate as well. That would be a white. Malteser. <laughs> it's you clear know, we didn't go to medical school. You, you, you've never seen a white uh, whopper. That's true. I guess. <laughs> no. How about this? When your when your leg or your arm falls asleep, is that for like, blood circulation cutting off, or is that a nervous nerve thing? Asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, haven't you ever you fallen asleep? Haven't you? Like sometimes I'll wake up and your arm, you know, yeah. you can't move and it's tingly. Yeah. You've ever had that happen at night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's. Yeah, so you're you're lying on the blood vessel and it cuts the the blood circulation off, and so your arm, you know, you wake up and you're panic, you can't move your arm, and then you start moving it, but it's tingly as the blood comes back. So it's a blood a blood flow issue. Blood. I have that. I have that. Now, every, pinch, every morning, I find it hard to clench my fists. I have to do that a few times because they're all like yeah. weird and well. And pinch nerves can cause numbness and tingling too, right? I mean, like carpal tunnel syndrome, people wake up with tingling in their fingers, so it can be both. Mm. Yeah, I get a pinched nerve in my neck, and it like radiates down my back, or something. It's it's occasionally. It, it's so weird how it, it like makes you weak all of a sudden. It's like I think it's a nerve. I don't know. <laughs> as far as got nerve problems, see a nerve how long does he have? <laughs> we, we, me and, I'm trying to sell a, sell a game show for Forrest called Nerve Damage or Stroke, <laughs> where, where we bring we bring Forrest out and he reads his ailments, and we have to decide whether he's hungry or not. <laughs> Um, he, he's setting himself up for workman's comp, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have that. That's the grand prize. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that. <laughs> we, I, I'd let him recline. He can lay on a fucking bed if he needs to. Maybe he can be on one of those inversion tables. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you're saying I should see a neurosurgeon just for that? I thought a, a massage or something would help. Me. There's so yeah, many doctors like you have to see therapist. before that. That's like so far Jim, in your Jim, doctor Jim list. could hire your massage therapist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I always, I always think to myself. Well, you know, we used to like um, at where we live. I we w- would house professional women's golfers at our house every year, and they have their own personal massage therapists that travel with them. And that guy would come in, go into the room with her for an hour in our house, and then come out. You know, and they would do that every day. That's questionable. Yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah. why? Why I did you house? Kind of what, what? What's going on in Toledo? There's okay, a, is there for, a big LPGA event all, there. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And second of all, like, great not, opportunity. There's not enough hotel rooms, is there? Is that the problem? Why? Why are you? Are they? Are they professional? These aren't student golfers. Because I remember, no, I remember that one time golfers, I had Tiger you know, Woods just, um, in my house like for a stay week. With families instead of staying in hotels. Oh, they like to stay with families. Yeah. So we, yeah. That's why pretty cool why would here, why I mean, would they prefer? Nice. That? I'm not. So your family seems very nice, but why would they prefer to be? I like a hotel. I. I, I, often people write to me and they go, "Hey, you're coming to town. Me and my wife would like to take you out to dinner." 
I'd rather stab myself yeah. in the face. <laughs> but you know, than to go they out don't with make a couple of strangers. Make, you know, they don't make as much money. So some of these gals don't make a lot of money. So I yeah. think it saves them money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, true, right, true right, that. Right, right. Be my guest. I don't know. Yeah. You wouldn't. What about young male? You never house the male ones. <laughs> they make money. No, not at the good ones. <laughs> yeah, the, if you're on the PGA tour, you're probably making money. If the LPGA if you're ranked real money, low, oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, there's a lot less money in the LPGA, unless you're like Nelly Corder or one of the top golfers. But, but. I house a uh, local cornhole yeah. players. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. They go into they don't a make room. Anybody. They go into a room. No one massages. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, I've seen the professional cornhole. I wonder how much they make a professional Man, cornhole. Man, I don't, they're not enough. They're so good. Yeah, yeah, they're just lobbing him in the like. Why aren't they basketball players that throw hoops like this? <laughs> uh, well, because oh, it says no. Professional cornhole salaries range from fifty grand to seventy five grand. I don't believe. All that. right, anyway, brain I, surgery. I don't believe that. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going back here in the U.S. How much education? Does the human mind get distracted easily <laughs> in the U.S. How much education and training does it take to be able to legally practice neurosurgery? Jim said you have four initial years, and then there's three years that you have to specialize. Specialize, yeah, yeah. seven. Is yeah, it? so he did pretty good. So, but um, so it's four years of college, right? And then you got to do four years of medical school, and then neurosurgery is a seven to eight year residency. So, so it's 15 years of training um, Holy after smokes. high school. It, it, all the neurosurgeons so are going to look like fucking Biden. I became a neurosurgeon. <laughs> you were 34 by the time you were done with your education. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So I guess that's why So not a lot of mature like, age you know, students in your course. No one like, I tried to decide to change professions when I was 50. <laughs> Mix things up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to finish college and go straight to retirement. But that does check out. That that does make more sense than what I mean. Doctors get paid a lot because it's a it's a stressful job. It's difficult. All that, but off you're not getting really any money until you're in your thirties. Oh, no, you could do some neuroscience things in college, and the the athletes are getting paid now, and I assume they do as well, like a few backyard jobs. Well, yeah. <laughs> but think of what I got paid when I was so when I started residency my first year. I think I was twenty seven or twenty eight. I made fifteen thousand dollars that year. And I worked one week, um, 140 hours or something like that. Ooh. Can you imagine what I get paid per hour? I mean, not like. Yeah, I'm not a mathematician, <laughs> but I reckon if you gave me a calculator, cents. I could get that. It's, yeah. 140. But, um, and I think I maxed out my chief resident year, my last year residency, I think I maxed out like 28,000 for the year. So you don't make a lot of money. Yeah, but you were residency, working all the time. You, you, things didn't, have, you didn't have any right? time to spend it. So yeah, you just sleep at the hospital. It's all the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. you what, get to you get to meet nurses. That's got to be fun. What is it? It is fun. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife doesn't think so, but <laughs> was, wait, wait, how did you meet your wife? Is, is your wife a nurse? Is she in the medical world as well? Oh well, yeah. So we met between the first and second year of medical school, and so she's a um, a forensic pathologist, but she retired. But she had a really cool job. I wish she was like some... CSI. You know, she she did all that kind of stuff. Like yeah. doctors and stuff. Like that's the problem with the world is like. So you're a smart person, so you get to meet other smart people and procreate and make more smart people. You, you your kids would be smart. <laughs> Lord, does that. Me, is that I'm, how it works? I'm rolling around in my own feces dating actresses. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like I, my kid goes to a good school, and I'm like, "You don't stand a chance, boys. <laughs> just, just hold your head high and give it a go. Just be funny." <laughs> Um, We're going to get behind personality here, kids. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what is the earliest known record of brain surgery? Jim said lobotomy in 2000 BC. 2000 BC. Yeah, so I, because I, I, I was looking this up for some reason. I could do a TikTok on this um, truffination and all this stuff, and it's I, it's almost 7,000 years ago. They found like 40 skulls in France that had holes in the skull that were that were man made, and so. They think maybe they put those holes in people's skulls to let evil spirits out. It wasn't for any medical condition, but um, that's the earliest brain surgery is almost seven thousand years ago. Could we There's even- a lot of lot of lot of evidence of brain surgery from the Incas and a thousand and two thousand BC, but but it dates all the way back to seven thousand years ago. So can we argue like with mummification, pharaohs and stuff like that? Well, a lot of people were mummified, mum- mum- and the, so they would dr- drag the brain out from the nose. Does that count as brain surgery because yeah. the person's already dead? 
Well, that's kind of like what a a lobectomy is, lobotomy. You know, they used to do that for people with mental illnesses. They would go up through the nose and they would just stir your brain and just Mm. destroy it. And then people would become more docile. And that's what a lobotomy was. Wait, that's how a lobotomy is performed? They just stick some brain milk and stir it? Yeah, it's like like when you get an egg. You can't can't, can't get it back in the the shell, mate. Once the the egg's broken. Is that a nice whisk up there? Wait, hold on. What were you saying, doctor? The... No, I think in the begin- beginnings, that's how they did it. They would put something up. Because if you go straight up through the nose, you'll go right into the brain. Mm-hmm. So I used to date a girl. Far, if you go far enough. I used to date a girl years ago who was super into reincarnation and all this type of stuff, all that rubbish, right? And um, she she used to go on, the brain isn't all we think it is because there's been people who have had heart transplants and then they've been able to speak other languages. She's all this bullshit, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then like, and then, you know, they're, they're different once they have an extra kidney from another person. They have memories of that thing. Yeah. And she says that all yeah. the organs, can you, can you prove that that's a load of bullshit for me, please, if that girl's listening? <laughs> I, I would agree that's a load of bullshit yeah. <laughs> although what about that movie remember the movie where the, the eye transplant they had the eye transplant and then she could see what that person used to see and I think he was a murderer oh, did you ever yeah, see that movie yeah. oh uh, what was that I did see that but I don't remember the name it's of called it it's called I.I. Yeah. Captain <laughs> no it's not it <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> um, wait so jumping ahead to the lobotomy how is it performed today and what is it exactly what does that mean lobotomy I mean, so it, you can, there's there's lobectomy where you could take a lobe, a whole lobe of the brain out, and then there's lobotomy, which is similar. But I think you know a lobotomy they're not really performed anymore. I mean, that was back in the days of mental illness and people who had aggression and mental illness problems, and they thought by you know destroying the frontal lobe, the part of the brain up here, that that uh, it would make people more calm, and it did. But you know, a lot of people in the early days didn't survive those yeah. surgeries, but you know, I've had people who come in with head injuries who will have injury to both frontal lobes, you know, this part of the front of the brain, and um, their personality changes completely. You know, they, they, they can become more sedentary or sometimes they become more aggressive. So, I mean, I think when people say lobotomy, I think they're thinking about destroying or hurting that part of the frontal lobe to change the personality. I heard somewhere that men, we do get grumpier with age because our frontal lobes shrivel up and women's don't as much. Is is that an old wives tale or is that a real thing? I think so. I've never heard of that. Uh, Mm. I want an excuse. I I didn't know we we got more grumpy with age. Ah, yeah. Just say you got a concussion. I didn't even ask you the parts of the brain, Jim. Front and back. I know. Left to that right. That would be a good one. Yeah, the front and back is what you're going Frontal with. Frontal like- lobes, back of lobes, middle lobes. <laughs> <laughs> Mega lobes. <laughs> yeah. Mega Ultras. Can you name the lobes? Can you name the lobes of the brain? Left. There's four major ones. Right. Rear no. left, rear right. No, he's not going to be able to do it. You, uh, you, you can, no, uh, it's uh, the, right. the um, ocelot. Ocelot? Isn't that a cat? Yeah. No, os- 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 just os- name os- one. Os- 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 Ocelot is the chemical I can't have anymore. Yeah, just one. Just name one. Uh, Jerry. Okay, doctor. What, what, you, you can tell us. <laughs> the frontal lobe. We just said the frontal lobe. <laughs> the frontal lobe. I said the frontal lobe. Okay. You said the frontals and the backles. <laughs> yeah, the frontals and the backles. <laughs> what are some other parts of the brain? The bottom is you put a whisk up the nose and... <laughs> scrambled cool. eggs. What about other parts of the brain? <laughs> so there's the frontal lobe, right? That's kind of like your reasoning center and some of your personality. Then there's the parietal lobe. Mm. Um, then there's the occip- occipital lobe. That's where your vision is. So if you hurt that, you can go blind. Mm. And then there's your temporal lobe, and that houses your memory and some of your emotions. Mm. Yeah, and, my my temporal yep, lobe yep. needs a bit of a revamp. It's a bit decayed up there. Very emotional. Yeah. I don't remember anything, and I'm yeah. very emotional. Where's the hippocampus? <laughs> <laughs> hippocampus is on the on the inside of the temporal lobe. So the hippocampus is in charge of memory. Okay. So, you ever see that movie? Um, what was it where the guy couldn't remember anything? Like you, you talked Memento. To him Memento. Later, you remember yeah, Memento. I think it was on 50, 50 dates with. Um, oh, fifty oh, first, yeah. first dates. Fifty yeah. first dates with Adam Sandler. Fifty first dates. Yeah. So, so if you have bilateral hippocampal injury, then you can be like that. You just can't remember anything. Oh wow! So okay, you so- can remember long term memory. You can remember events from the past, but you never make new memories, so you can't 
you can't remember anything moment to moment. Is it true that left-handed people rely on their right-handed side of their brain? Because you know when people go, I'm right-brained or left-brained. Is that a load of hoopla bullshit? Wait, say it again. What? what? Okay, so you know how some people go, your right-hand side of your brain is more maths or this or logical thinking and your left-hand side is more imaginative or what things like that. Is that real or is that just a lot of rubbish? I mean, I think there's some reality to it, but not much. Mm. Um and th- I, I don't think we know why one person has a dominant, you know, uh, most people, you know, 90% of the world is um, left side dominant. Right. Okay. So, so that, so. But, but is that true? So left side dominant means you're right handed and right side dominant means you're left handed. Right. Okay. And yeah, so- left side dominant means like if you have a stroke in your left side of your brain, you may not be able to speak anymore. You won't understand what people see to you. So when, when I have injuries to the brain and I, I'm deciding, should they go to surgery or should we do something to save their life? You know, one thing to discuss with the family is if you have a dominant hemisphere injury, you're more likely to have trouble speaking, understanding people. Your life will be horrible Mm -hmm. as opposed to a right sided brain injury where you still be able to speak pretty well and understand people. So it makes a difference when we think about what to do with people for surgery um, when it's one side of the brain or the other. There's there's a there's a theory that left-handed people are more creative because they use the right-hand side of the brain, but that might be bull- like they always. Well, I think you know, Jimmy people Hendrix, say like, you know, Paul McCartney, maybe, Mozart, people left-sided are better at math and things like that. Yeah, mm. right-sided mm. people are are more musical and, and spatial. I think. I, yeah, they believe that. Is that sure. a lot of rubbish? The, the, the more musical. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't. The know only the fixes behind us. I don't. Yeah. Know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible having a stroke. Terrible. I know someone who's had a stroke. Yeah. He's in a, in a very vegetated state and all that sort of stuff, and doesn't really remember you or anything. Like that. It's, it's it's not pleasant. I have a question. Well, so what's the cerebellum then? There's different lobes, and then the yep. So cerebellum's the very back part of your brain. So that's in charge of like your balance. Um, so people have cerebellar strokes will be off balance. They can't walk right. They can't use their fingertips like fine motor movements. They can't do very well. So it has. The cerebellum is mostly to do with balance and fine, fine coordinated movements. Oh, they, yeah. they always say that we're only using ten percent, five percent of our brain's capacity. Mm-hmm. How, how would they know that? That's got to be rubbish as well, right? Or like, or, or I can too. they actually I think tell that's it? rubbish too. Yeah. So we're but using Lucy, all of it, right? Because I'm really percent of her brain in that one movie. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you're referring yeah. to? Which, our, our doc, Dr. Heflinger gets all of his information from movies, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's an awesome Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's he gets that little sore off and he, he saws yeah, the exactly skull right. off and he removes it and he's like, 50 first dates if I've ever seen it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's interesting with the strokes. I never really thought about that. So depending on what part of the brain the stroke occurs is how it affects. I just lumped strokes all into one category like it was like oh it's gonna affect no anyway. like the band the strokes a, when I'm they a, actually get old and have okay. strokes do, they, do you think that'll still be a cute name for the band what were you saying spot. dr Hefflinger, about the strokes oh no go ahead i, I didn't mean that he was making a joke don't worry about it what were you saying about the oh. strokes and the different <laughs> yeah no i'm just a big proponent of that because my brother eric was in a car accident when he was 21 and he had a, a left-sided brain injury right and he was right-handed and um, he had to have emergency brain surgery in the middle of the night. And he was in a coma for six months. And, you know, the rest of his life, he could never walk or talk or, you know, speak again and, and just needed constant care. And um, he had said a few times, I remember in the early years, he'd say, you know, I'm just bored because he had to use a board to speak. And he would say, what did I ever do to deserve this? And it's very profound. But, you know, he lived like 40 years and then died about 10 years ago. But when I talk to families in the middle of the night, I, I bring him up and I, you know, it, you know, if somebody's going to be like that and their quality of life is going to be that horrible, I give them, I give them the option of not doing anything, you know? Yeah, no, so, I'm, I'm, so it does, it does matter what side of the brain it's on. Yeah. I'm a big, big fan of euthanasia, man. I'm like a <laughs> big fan of it. <laughs> not, not young, not young Asian people. I'm yeah. talking about like, uh, no, right, right, right. Yeah. No, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, uh, of, uh, uh, yeah, if you don't want to be around anymore and you, your quality of life's bloody terrible, I reckon you should be allowed to. I think that's very unjust because people bring up religion and stuff to stop it. Yeah. And it's like, fuck you, yeah. that's your problem. You don't, Then you don't have to die. You bloody yeah. hang on forever. I don't have to. Also, what is a stroke exactly? I, I, totally, I totally agree with you too. I think people should have the choice. You know, if things are that bad, who has the right to tell them that they can't, you know, end it? I mean, 
Yeah. And they don't they do it in other countries? I is doesn't like Sweden or Belgium. Somewhere they're allowed to Belgium, do that. you barely need to even give them a reason. Yeah, but, yeah. But uh, yeah. The, the Dutch will do it if you're sad. <laughs> <laughs> Jack asked what a stroke is. I should have asked that as a question. Yeah, right? I don't even really know. Yeah, what is a stroke? So what a stroke is? So um, a stroke is when you when you stop getting blood supply through a blood vessel to a certain part of the brain, that brain will die. And when it dies, that's what a stroke is. So, you know, if somebody has a, a, um, a blood clot in the blood vessel in the brain, it stops the flow to the, that part of the brain. And then say it's the part of the brain that moves your arm and leg, then you become paralyzed. Mm. Um, and is that why cigarettes, so called, cigarettes are bad? Because they clog up arteries and... and, and that, yeah. Yeah. Cigarettes, are, they cause heart disease and, and changes in your blood vessels. And then what, like hardening of your arteries... And then um, that leads to heart attacks, you know, strokes and things like that. Mm. And what's the difference between a stroke and an aneurysm then? We asked an aneurysm, he's, Jim said, was bleeding on the brain. Yeah, so so they are different. So an aneurysm is like a blood vessel off of a, a, a ballooning off a blood vessel. So you ever see a hose that has a bubble on it, you know, like a weak spot in the side of a hose? Have you ever seen yeah. that? Yeah. Or not really? Yeah, I've no? seen it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, but, you know, an aneurysm is a weak spot in the side of a blood vessel that balloons out. And then... Think of the aneurysm as a balloon. The top of the balloon can rupture, and when it ruptures, you know, blood comes out under high pressure, and, you know, 20% of the people die before they even get to the hospital, and another 30 or 40% of people die even if they make it to the hospital. Um, so an, a ruptured aneurysm can cause bleeding, and I guess it could cause a stroke as well, but a stroke is different than an aneurysm. Yeah. And why is it like... But, but you were right about... But Jeff, I mean, Jim, you were right. Sorry about that. You sure. were right about the aneurysm. I mean, um, it does cause bleeding if it ruptures. Now, why, why is it um, imperative that we, uh, if you have a stroke, that you see attention very quick? I know, I, I know someone who's in a very bad state who who had a stroke and wasn't found for hours and hours and hours, and it was yeah. really not a, not a good thing. But if she was found a lot earlier uh yeah. so why why is it bad hard to be fit like isn't the damage already done yeah. the bit of the brain dies the end no. what, what what why is it important so, to get caught yeah so like so some people can have what's called a tia you've heard of that right a transient ischemic attack so it's a tia yeah so it's a strike it's a stroke trying to happen but it doesn't happen and so if you get you know if you if you are starting to have a stroke and you get the hospital quick enough they can give you something called tpa and it's something they give through the blood vessels of the brain that can dissolve the blood clot. So, I mean, there's been people who come in who are can't speak, they can't move their side of their body, and they get this TPA done within like four hours, and they all of a sudden they're speaking again and moving their arms. So, mm. the whole point about getting to the hospital quickly is so they can potentially treat you to dissolve the blood clot, so you get blood flow back to the brain before the brain dies. Does that make sense? That does. And that, and that does. Uh, and early signs, what, what's to watch out? Is it, it, I've heard that you, you meant to smell burning toast. <laughs> well, early signs can be anything. It can be um, trouble with your speech. Um, it can be drooping of your face, weakness of your arm or leg, tingling in your arm or leg, um, you know, confusion. You're acting confused. Any of those things, you know, if they're, if you notice anything like Wearing that. Wearing an you, LA you know, hat with an orange brim. You can't brim. speak. You can't move your arm. Then you got to hightail it to the ER. Um, that's so Tuesday. Cool. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 I was just making a joke about my health. Um, what is trephination? Um, Jim said when you get to the edge and say I shouldn't go much further. I don't think that's right. <laughs> Close. No, trephination is, um, you know, when you put a hole in the skull. So if I drill a hole in the skull during surgery or in the middle of the night, I need to put a, a drain into somebody's brain. Somebody's been in a car accident. Um, I'll drill a hole through the skull. That's called trephination. So, did you watch Dharma? I did not. You got to watch Dharma. He puts lots of holes in the side <laughs> of people's heads, and he tried to make them into zombies. And he poured, I don't know, some acid. So he drilled holes. He poured acid, and then they. So wow. he wanted to have them alive, but not alive, so they wouldn't leave him, type of thing. And then one oh, so guy, he did that while they're alive, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did that. And there was one guy who escaped and he was like, he had a hole in his head with acid. And, uh, and then the cops were like, oh, why is this? And he was a 14-year-old boy. And the cops go, oh, why is this guy like this? And he's like, oh, that's my boyfriend. And then they just let him take him upstairs. Jeez. But anyway, um, if you're listening at home, uh, don't do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good advice. 
<laughs> you were saying you were saying trepanation was I try failing. to help where I can. If I just save one life this podcast. That's right. Good work. You, well, you might have with the stroke, actually, because the signs of a stroke are important. So. Yeah. yeah. You were saying trepanation. They, they found evidence of that in Incans, or, or the, that was the French skulls, too, that, that far back? Yeah, so trepanation. So so the, that's what we were talking about. Are those skulls they found that have the holes in them, um, those are per, purposely it, put holes. And those, so that those would be trepanation. That would be they were performing trepanation way back when. You said they found like 40 skulls. Was it 40 you said, I think? I think in France it was the ones that are seven thousand years old. I think it was like forty skulls they found with it. So it wasn't just an accident. I mean, they could tell that this, these were perp- these holes were purposely made, and so they were doing something. With it. And they, the funny thing is, not funny, but they were saying, did they even use anesthesia in these people, or any kind of you know alcohol or or medicinal stuff, or did they just do it while they were awake? You know. Well, maybe that was just a Jeffrey Dahmer of France, and he Perhaps. just did his forty people. <laughs> Could have been like I like. Well, to I think meet it was like that form of the 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 try, You know, I mean lobotomy. <laughs> I mean they were just trying stuff. Yeah. One more, th- one more thing with with uh, with the strokes. I wanted to ask another question about the strokes. It was Uh-oh. a good one too. Oh no. Are you okay? <laughs> forgotten and confused all right we'll, we'll come back you think you're having when, one when yeah maybe when was the first successful brain tumor removed jim said 1976 on a summer's day <laughs> yeah so i had to look this one up i didn't know the exact date i knew it was in the 1800s but it was 1879 wow. it was actually a scottish surgeon who did it what month was it <laughs> you don't need to yeah uh, November. Ah, ah, it wasn't even a summer's uh, day. <laughs> which which hemisphere? Wait, wait, what's my confidence level? What was my confidence level on that? How hungry <laughs> am I? I'm pretty hungry. Yeah, it, it, it might have happened in New Zealand. <laughs> um, be what, bloody hot then. What are some types of surgery a neurosurgeon will perform? Jim said lobotomy, removal of brain tumors. Um, obviously, yep. we've been talking about strokes. What else? What else do you do? So he got one out of a hundred. Oh, right, I've got my stroke no, question. I've got my stroke just question. Kidding. We'll go back. Um, I've got my stroke question. So, so in the brain, you can perform surgery for, you know, blood clots on the brain, for aneurysms, for arterial venous malformations, which is a tangle of blood vessels, for tumors, um, for fluid buildup on the brain, for um, congenital abnormalities, and the list goes on. But then also, you know, we do surgery on the spine. So we operate over the spinal cord and the lower back. Um and that can be for trauma, for tumors, um, old age, for narrowing of the spinal canal, for vascular anomalies. And then we operate on the peripheral nerves. Um, so those would be like the ulnar nerve and the uh, median nerve, the radial nerve. Yeah. So, so it, it, okay, this is my question. Right, it's a good one. Is there anything... I can do in my day-to-day life for stroke prevention. Mm. Now, I know not smoking is a thing, um, but uh, like like I know you can have a heart attack when you're overexerting yourself. You're jogging, you're running, you're, you're fucking too much or you're lifting yeah. heavy things, you can do it. Is, is what, uh-huh. what can bring on a stroke and wait, what can, can, you, I, what wait, can, can I do to avoid ahead. the stroke? Um, I think the best thing you can do is just you got to blood pressure, control your blood pressure, make sure you got good blood pressure. Obviously, exercise is very important. Um, so exercising can help keep you healthy in general. Um, eating right, right? Because, I mean, eating high cholesterol foods and fatty foods and things like that, but that's that causes too buildup of cholesterol in your blood vessels. And, you know, you get hardening, <laughs> what the common term, hardening of your arteries, and that can lead to heart disease and stroke. So, I mean, those are the main things. Just, you know, healthy living, healthy eating, exercising, um, you know, and, alcohol and, is something and let, that can lead to. Let's say um, that one wasn't doing any of those things. Disease. What else huh? could one do if, 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 if? Let's just say that I didn't. I, I, I was eating a lot of food. Are you speaking? Steaks. Wait, are you asking for a friend or yourself? <laughs> I'm asking for Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I'll, I'm interested. <laughs> I don't not need to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eat more right, spinach, Jim. Yeah, is it like I should wear more sweatpants or? <laughs> well, you gotta look, my jeans well, you gotta too tight. The, you gotta the part. So if you're gonna exercise, I would definitely. I go to like Lululemon, get some good sweatpants. That probably help. Okay, go. sweatpants. It go is. to Lululemon, get some stuff. Right, right, uh, right, right, right. Um, here we go. What is a craniotomy? Did I say it right now? <clears throat> Yeah, so craniotomy is where you take a piece of bone off the side of the skull. So if, if I'm going to do brain surgery to take a, 
a blood clot off the brain or a tumor out of the brain, you have to have access. So you have to take a piece of the skull off, and that's called a craniotomy. Mm. Okay, th- yeah, and then uh, laminectomy, Jim said you laminate the brain. I'm assuming that's wrong. Keep all the juices in. Yeah, so laminectomy. So I did a laminectomy today. So a laminectomy is where I take the bone off the back of the spine Ooh. to gain access to where the, the nerves are. Mm. Wow. And He's only halfway through it. <laughs> <laughs> he popped over here to do the podcast. Yeah. We'll, we'll hear in the background, <laughs> oh, he's waking up. <laughs> do you, if you're in a room with an orthopedic surgeon, do you feel superior to them? Because I feel like brain surgery, I know that's always a joke because I'm not a brain surgeon, but it just seems uh, the hardest. Uh, mate, if you, if he, brain and spine is if, like, if he's chatting to a dermatologist, like a it'd be like, this is not brain surgery. small because those guys are all buffed and big and, and I'm not all muscular like they are. The orthopedic surgeons? Uh, yeah, they're usually, there's a lot of them are just really, you know. What about optometrists? Studs, Do you look at them like, get the fuck out of here, optometrist? <laughs> <laughs> all, you, uh, all, you do, all you're doing is know. like, what about this one? Look at this one. One or two. <laughs> What's better, this one? This one. <laughs> this one. Uh, oh, got, you got cataracts? Uh, there's another bloke who does it. <laughs> I got a specialist for you. Yeah. Uh, a disc. Discotomy. Oh, I, I guess I said this wrong. I said disectomy. Yeah. It's a disc. Yeah, it's discectomy. Oh, well, discectomy. Now I can get. So you. Know, I mean. So do you know what the disc is? Do you know what a disc is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does not. <laughs> yeah, I do. All right. So. <laughs> you, you tell me, and I'll tell you if you I get hope it right. You do. <laughs> Jesus. No. So. Uh, a disc. <laughs> yeah, is, um, it's it's the it's the space in between the two bones of your spine. So, oh yeah, yeah. You know, my people ma- get a herniated. My well, mother had a, a slip disc. disc. My mother had a slip disc, and all I heard my whole childhood yeah. was, "Oh, my slip disc!" And she used to lay on a wooden board, with like like this, "Oh, because of me slip disc." And so we heard about the slip <laughs> disc all the time. My back, my back, my back. Right. Although she could whack you with full force, but walking around was hard. But she could really get a run up to hit you. Well, she needed and, a discectomy. Dis- yeah, discectomy. But she had a slip disc, and then when she got became an insulin dependent diabetic, we stopped hearing about the slip disc it went away uh, mm. went, again. and then when she got parkinson's we stopped she hearing focus about on something else you mean right yeah when when uh, she got parkinson's we yeah. stopped hearing about the diabetes and then when she was That's dead right. we stopped hearing whoa well a discectomy <laughs> is what then discectomy it's a slip disc yeah so a discectomy is, is where you take the disc out like today i did a discectomy too i took the disc out completely and then I put a spacer and fuse, and fuse the spine. Or sometimes you just do a partial discectomy. If you just have part of the disc that's pinching a nerve, you'll just take part of the disc out to unpinch the nerve. Hmm. Now, do you deal with spine, so like your, spinal injuries, right. people, quadriplegics, paraplegics? And if so, I know that's very linked to the brain and the nerve system. How far are stem cells coming? And, and in, in our lifetime, will people start walking again? Yeah, I mean, stem cell is still um, not there. I don't know. I mean, I'm not up on the latest, greatest research on it, but certainly they're trying to implant stem cells in spinal cord injury to try to regenerate, um, you know, regenerate the, the cells of the spinal cord. But, you know, stem cells are um, they're much more prominent when we're little babies, right? So st- stem cells are cells that can turn into anything. They can, they can turn into muscle, skin, your eyes, anything. And so stem cells are first of all hard to get and because they're only found mostly in younger people and in embryos and then the stem cells they put in the problem is how does the you know when you have a spinal cord injury how does it know how to connect the right fibers back together to make everything work you know and i don't think that's i don't think that's happened i think they've had more luck with doing um you know um what's the word i'm looking for like bypassing the injury you know they take Mm. a nerve and they place the nerve above and below the injury and try to get the signals to go that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, why would well, so could they yeah, take out a bit of the spine? Huh? This is my idea, right? You can pass it on to your doctor friends, right? <laughs> How about if the bit that's broken, you take that bit out, disc and all, a couple of discs, a little bit of spine, take that bit out, and then you redo the two good bits, and it's just like, you see like some guy who's like four foot tall, and you go, you, you broke three bits mm-hmm. of his back. Yeah. Hmm. So it becomes a short guy. Well, you know, they do that with like, they do that with peripheral nerve injuries. Like you have an injury to a, a nerve in your arm or leg, they can splice it back together, cut out the injured part and connect the, 
other parts together. And a lot of times they get good recovery. The spinal cord's just different. You know, the spinal cord isn't like a peripheral nerve. It's different and it doesn't heal the same way. Why would a patient be awake during a specific brain surgery, Jim? So said so they can tell them the parts that hurt. So you can see the things going <laughs> pew, 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 pew in the brain. So that's why I take eugenics. I oh, know that's for testosterone. That's why I take memory pills. All right. Yep. Let them answer, please, Jim. <laughs> no, we, we did a lot we did a lot of awake brain surgery during my residency, um, mostly for epilepsy, but say you have a tumor that's right in the part of the brain where your speech is or um, it's in the part of the brain that moves your arm or leg, right? So if you if you go in and take that tumor out and you don't know what, what part of the brain is responsible for your speech or movement, you could paralyze somebody. Mm-hmm. So what you do is you, you have the patient awake at surgery, and there's a specific way to do that, to get them to that point. And then what we would do is we stimulate those parts of the brain. So when the person's awake, we would ask them to read a sentence, and they would be reading – and when they're reading, we would stimulate a part of the brain. And if they stop talking, then we knew that part of the brain is important. You can't take it. So we put a little mark there, a little sticker, and we move on to another area. And so you map the brain out, and then you know where you can, where you, what you can take away wow. and what you can't. You know, what they, you can they, resect and what you can't. They'd get me so, to read something. If um, you've ever heard me read ads on this podcast, <laughs> they, they'd get me to read and they go, oh, obviously, this is the bit that takes care of his reading. <laughs> We can take care of that, and then I'm fucking paralyzed. <laughs> but it, it was wild. I mean, you could, like, we would stimulate parts of the brain, and people, you know, you'd move their hand or their finger or their leg. And you, wow. Just, you I see know, you it's, can it's control amazing them to watch like a, like the a brain video game. And then watch the body part move. Like a marionette. Yeah. What is a cyber knife? Jim thought that's what they use for lobotomies. No, it's Cyber Monday. Yeah. No, he said it was a Cyber Monday. Yeah. Cyber Monday, yeah. yeah. I guess it could be done on Cyber Monday, but... um. So a cyber knife, basically what it is, it's it's radio surgery. So instead of doing, so say you have a tumor in the brain and it's not real big, instead of doing a craniotomy and taking the skull off and doing surgery to take the tumor out, you can do focused radiation and radiation can kill the tumor over the course of, you know, a year or so. Mm. Um, so it's focused radiation. So it's called cyber knife because it's, it's like pseudo surgery, right? It's, it's killing the tumor, but you're not actually doing actual surgery you're just you're doing radio surgery that makes sense what's it what's yeah, a, what's yeah. a medical practice that's done in brain surgery uh, uh that's not done anymore that you look back on like fuck i can't believe we used to do that because mm-hmm. we're saying like, lobotomies. Lo- lobotomies yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lobotomies. um um what is i don't know i mean there's not most most of the stuff that's been done is still being done i mean yeah, mm. it's the egg whisking of the lobotomy. That's the egg whisking of the lobotomy. <laughs> what yeah. if we used to open the skull up and piss on it, <laughs> to sterilize it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, and, then, and then put the leeches on it to suck all the piss away. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, they used to operate without gloves. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's something yeah, yeah. like you know, long time ago before sterile technique. I mean, they didn't wear gloves when they operated, and there was no sterile technique. I mean, how people didn't get infections right and left is beyond me. But it's like the hurt locker. You want to have the f- sense with your fingers when you, you diffuse <laughs> sure, it. Yeah. 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 What is a shunt? I mean... Oh, sorry. <laughs> so a shunt... Yeah. No, that's good. A shunt is... um. So when you have fluid buildup on the brain... So people... If you if you have fluid buildup on your brain, people can die very quickly. They can die within 30 minutes. So a shunt is a tube that we put into the brain to drain fluid off... Um, Hmm. So oh, I knew that. That's what the shun is. That's like they uh, have that little hole yeah. in the side of their head where their head's leaking, right? Leaky heads. Yeah, yeah, there was a guy. I, 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 I host a game show, and on the game show, one of the contestants ha- said he had a little drip at the back of his head, and he and he leaked a coke can full of fluid every day out the back of his head. <laughs> what? It was something this guy had too much <laughs> fluid on the brain. Is that a thing? He went <laughs> quite far in the show, I think, but he. But- but it leaked. Wait, was it leaking on the outside of his skin? I didn't touch him or anything. He said that he, <laughs> he, he collected the. There's Australia, by the way. Yeah, he, he collected <laughs> it up. He collected. He didn't use a Coke can. It could have been any can. It could. It could have, don't been worry. A spray can. Don't, don't, liquid death. <laughs> right? I think he was bullshitting you, Jim. 
Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what benefit would have he had to do that? I told everyone. He's trying to get. He's trying to get. Yeah. So he said. Well, he, all, he, he said his brain he leaks a coke fluid, can a day. He'd get meningitis and die if he had leaking fluid. So yeah, maybe it was yeah. an internal leak. Was it internal? Well, leak? Where, where does the shunt could go? be an internal? Leak, I guess. I mean, where does the yeah, shunt drain? Be, it maybe too. had a shunt and maybe had a shunt. Yeah, and it drains it to where the sh- inside your body somewhere. Yeah, so most of the time we put a shunt, we'll t- tunnel it under the skin down into the abdomen and, and you'll yeah. drain into your abdomen and your body That's resorbs the fluid. Sometimes it gets put into the heart. Sometimes they put it into the cavity around the lungs, but mostly we put it into the abdomen. Mm. What? That's what he had. He had one of those leaking into his body. So shunt. What, uh, yeah. what is the fluid yeah. around the brain? What is it? I imagine it's mostly water, but what is it? Like just like a KY jelly type of thing or is it? What, what is it? <laughs> no, it's, it's just like water. I mean, it's, it's your spinal fluid. Right. Um, and it's just a, it's like a thin watery fluid and it has, um, nutrients that bathe the brain and the uh, mm-hmm. spinal fluid also kind of protects your brain. So it nourishes your brain, but it protects your brain. You know, it kind of gives a buffer. So your brain's floating and not bumping into your skull. Is it true that when you have a hangover, it's cause your brain's dehydrated? Part of it is yes. I mean, part of it is because of dehydration. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's rattling around your head. It's hitting the sides. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> The what is a craniopagus? What are craniopagus twins? Jim said Siamese twins joined at cranium. Yep. Ben Carson, so yep, he's a hundred percent right. Mm, I nice. interviewed with Ben Carson at John Hopkins for residency, actually. As he's famous for that, Ben Carson was. I didn't know. Yeah, that. he was. That was his. Uh, yeah. He is. Yeah. It was his big yep. thing because he said a few stupid things in the campaign, and then everyone was like, "This guy's." When we we're doing the Jim Jeffrey show, like yeah. that yeah. guy's an idiot. I'm like, "All right, settle down." Yeah, yeah. Still- you you want to call him an idiot? The guy's detaching fucking <laughs> Siamese twins. Give him a bit of credit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think most of those kids die, anyways. Most of those kids die. They don't survive, and a lot of them share su- such important structures in the brain that you can't you can't separate them. And if you do, you'll kill them. So. Mm. I'm a Siamese twin. I have a little man attached to my ass. <laughs> you share a butt. Yeah, you share everything. Um, Jose Delgado. Our lives together. That's Do you know what who Jose Delgado is? You freed the Spanish. He's freed the Spanish. You freed the Spanish. Jose Delgado. Delgado. I think he owns a Mexican restaurant, right? Or Spanish uh, restaurant. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I added I this one, last, I added this one last minute. Ricardo Bell. I added this one last <laughs> minute. It said he put electrodes into a bull and he could control the bull. I didn't know if that was a real thing, but I'll just I, I think that might bowl, be. I think it might be bullshit. We'll get rid of that question. Like a mechanical bull at a bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, like a real bull. That's right. yeah. uh, like when the men are on, he did it real quickly and got them off. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the women are on, he's a bit slow. Let them ride back and forth. Oh uh, yeah, well, he's a good man. The Gatos on it. <laughs> um, this is the part of our podcast called Dinner Party Facts. We ask our expert to give us some fact, obscure, interesting about the subject that people can use to impress people. You have something for us? Okay. I got two facts for you. Okay. All right. First one is, um, do you think the brain, do you think your brain feels pain? Um, I believe your brain does what, not feel you, pain. You mean when you touch it or like? Yeah, yeah, yeah the I, 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 I believe it's pain free huh. because you're doing that surgery and they're not screaming. Yeah, but a headache. I'd get ha- what's a headache then? The, the headache is or a is, brain freeze. The headache. They're not headaches, first. They're little <laughs> tiny strokes. <laughs> and, anyway, and when you get them, I want you to think, so, uh, think and worry. Uh. <laughs> so the brain, the brain actually has no pain receptors in it. So huh. like when they do a, when we do awake surgery, you have to numb huh. up the scalp with a lot of local anesthetic. And then the patient, you know, they make them sleepy. So they don't get a breathing tube. I mean, they're just, you know, most surgeries people get breathing tubes, but in this surgery, you don't, you don't put a breathing tube, but you just make them sleepy. You numb up the scalp, you expose the skull, take the skull off, open the covering of the brain, which has pain receptors, the dura, that's, that's the covering of the brain has pain receptors. And then once you have all that done, then you wake the patient up and then you operate on the brain. And so your brain doesn't have pain receptors, so it doesn't feel pain while you're operating on the brain wow. itself. Hmm. But all the structures around the brain, they have um, pain receptors. Yeah, it's because your your head's your headache it's pretty is skull being hit yeah. because of your dumb brain bashing into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just bumping yeah, around. Yeah, well, a lot of the headaches come pain. from the covering of the brain. You know, the blood vessels dilate uh, and they mm. and they pulse and they cause headaches. So what's brain a, what, what, what's a migraine? I believe it's an excuse for my wife not to talk to me for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. She just wants to sit in a dark room and not take care of the kid, and she <laughs> hates me for a while. I've got a migraine. Goodbye, everyone. Um, you said you had another day. No, no, what, what is a migraine? Oh, you want to know. Oh, so a migraine is a, a type. There's so many. So it's a type of headache. Um, and usually a migraine will have like specific qualities to it. Like some people, I don't know if your wife, some people will notice that they have, they can smell or taste things before it comes on, or they might have flashing lights in their eyes before it comes on. And then a migraine can be, you know, a throbbing headache, you know, where it's just your head feels like it's going to explode and it can last for, you know, minutes to hours to days. And, um, you know, specific medications, but a, a migraine is just a type of headache. When you get hit, remember when cartoon characters, they get hit, boom, and then stars around. But you don't do that thing where you fall over, you go up too quickly, and you get those little tiny yeah. twinkly things yeah. in your eyes. Is that your eyes or your brain doing that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I've actually – have you ever got up too quickly? Yeah. yeah. And you have that happen? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think yeah. I, I got up. It took me two minutes to get up the other day. And your, quick. I think your brain gets less blood flow to it, maybe the occipital lobe where your vision is. Yeah. And sometimes it can cause those little things that you see. Mm. I, I don't think we know for sure, but I think it's something along that line. Now, whenever you look at like brain scans, okay, so they, they've looked at brain scans of people and they see those fuzzy purpley and blue sort of meshy lights. And they say, this person's yeah. got, the, you know, the, okay. So they get a serial killer. And they go, we want to examine the brain to see why this person was like how they are, right? Or you get some, you get Einstein, we want to examine the brain. Is that a load of bullshit? Or when you cut into a brain, do you go, oh, this guy's intelligent? No, you can't, <laughs> you can't tell that in any way, shape, or form. I mean, all brains pretty much look the same for the most part. So then why did they tell. want to keep Jeffrey Dahmer's brain then? They, they, they wanted to get, there was a whole thing about it. people like, want to keep, I heard a podcast on Einstein's reign and some people believe that yeah. they want to keep him and study him, but the, the podcast house knew it was an NPR podcast. They said that there wasn't anything that you could tell different about. Because the, the mother and father had a big fight because yeah. they were like, well, we should find out why he was like how he was and no. But if they gonna... look at it, I mean, they may look at, they're going to look at it genetically and they're going to look at it, you know, on their microscope and mm. they'll probably look at, you know, does he have certain number of cells a bigger area like the hippocampus is this hippocampus bigger smaller i think that's what they're doing mm. but um, I, I don't i, I hear don't hitler's that brain they, had a little mustache any of that works <laughs> huh i hear hitler's mis brain had a little mustache on it it's true that's like people who are autistic what do their brains look like I don't know. Yeah. Cut it out. Well, have a you, look. I'll tell you this because I I used to work with dolphins and with and they would have, with autistic kids they would do therapy with them and they said that somebody one of the doc doctors saying their the cerebellum is less developed I think or something uh -huh. and the dolphins would be able to scan and see that their brain was developed differently and they would treat them differently I'd watch yeah. them treat them differently so my new drag name is going to be cerebellum yeah that's good um, you said you had one more dinner party fact Doctor Hefflinger. Oh yeah, so this is I just like I like boats. Um, so that is you ever a good hear fact. The SS United States, <laughs> the SS United States. What what about the United States? You, I know all about the United States. No, the, it's called the SS United States. Oh no, I don't know that one. It was it was a thousand it was a thousand foot ocean liner, mm -hmm. and the United States built this. It's the only sh ship like that the United States ever built. So it's kind of like the Queen Mary of the British. Remember the Queen Mary during the war used to transport troops back and forth. Mm, so no, the United a States place built a thousand party. foot ocean liner and they, they wanted it, they built it in 1950, I think. And they wanted it to be in case they needed a ship for war to transport troops. And so it was a, it was a passenger liner. I mean, it could hold, I think 1900 people and 900 crew, but the thing could go 50 miles an hour. And, and we know it could go at least that fast, but it was top secret. So they think it could even go faster. And um, they, the purpose of it was if they were going to transport troops, they didn't want submarines to be able to hit this ship. Um, and they wanted to be able to effectively transport troops. So can you imagine, I mean, a thousand foot ship, like one of these cruise ships today going 50 an miles an hour? Oh, wow. Yeah. I think fast. it's pretty incredible. I, I, I went, I tell you, this is, this is a bit sort of, okay, so I, I flew into Afghanistan in the middle of the war, right? Fun. With the soldiers. <clears throat> And uh, they were all going off to Afghanistan for the first time as well. I was going out there to tell fucking jokes. And when we landed, they turned off every light in the plane. The plane couldn't even have its out outdoor lights, our indoor lights. It was pitch dark. Even the bathroom and the seatbelt lights 
fucking gone, right? And it was just, anyway, it was just an interesting thing because they were transporting troops. They're having a stroke? Wow. All right. Uh, so all burnt toast. Dr. Brian Hefflinger. <laughs> sandwich. Dr. Brian Hefflinger, thank you for being here. Uh, find Dr. Hefflinger on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube at Dr. Hefflinger. We have it down there below, but it's D-O-C-T-O-R-H-O-E-F-L-I-N-G-E-R. And the Hefflinger podcast is available on all pa- platforms. So make sure to download that and listen to that. That's how I, f- I found you on TikTok, Dr. Hefflinger, and your posts are great. Yeah. And I, I encourage everybody to go follow you and listen to the podcast. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Doctor. I appreciate you yeah. being on the podcast, mate. We learn a bit of a thing or two. If you're ever at a at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, uh, uh, "I think I'm having a stroke," go, "I don't know about that." Run away because you don't have any medical experience yourself. <laughs> Good night, Australia. <laughs>